Good morning. I want to thank everyone for joining me today. The reason I'm bringing you all together is because this year has forced us all to pivot and readjust because of COVID. And it's really changed the way we've all interacted with each other. And it's changed the emotional landscape of school and our community. And I miss seeing everyone. So I really wanted a chance to reconnect. Before we get started, I wanna share a video that I put together. It's a compilation of videos that have been shared with me. Can everybody see that? Perfect. Here we go. There's a test after this, so pay attention. <laughs> yeah, because it is difficult. I have people jumping in the screen and background noise. <laughs> mm -hmm. Is it hard for you, Allison, getting everyone together? And you said you and your husband work opposite schedules? Yeah, we do, which is why he's never on these calls, because he works at night and I work during the day. So, Do you find it challenging? You're a working mom. You're a, are you a college professor? Yes, I am. But of international language, right? Yeah, we always have dinner together, so that's not an issue. I mean, that's amazing. But we, I also work a lot in the evenings. <laughs> that's probably a college professor's uh, job. Should I think he thinks. <laughs> <laughs> I think you're right. Um, <laughs> Rosafa tells the story of three young men, brothers, brothers of the house of Mer. Daddy, read it. <laughs> Years of Vinny. Years of Vinny, who were given the task of building a castle. Day by day, they worked hard to build the castle walls. Yet each night, they left and the walls would fall down. Day after day, they built walls. Night after night, they would fall. One day, as they were working on the same walls once again, a wise old man approached them. Day after day, we work on the castle, they told the old man. Yet every night, the wall tumbles down. We will never complete the castle. What must we do? I know what you must do, but I cannot tell you, said the wise old man. The brothers pleaded. Do you have wives at your home? The old man asked. 
Why, yes, we do, the brothers answered. The castle will not remain standing. The castle will only remain standing if one of your wives is sacrificed within, the, within, the, within its walls. Do not warn your wives, but whoever comes to bring tomorrow's lunch will need to be sacrificed. You must build the stone walls with her within them. Only then, only that shall prevent them from falling. The brothers all promised that none would tell their wives of the terrible fate that would occur to them the following day, should they at least be the one to take their lunch over to them. The oldest brother did not keep his promise and quietly told his wife of the terrible fate that, sh that would be befall her. <laughs> Keep away, he warned, he warned. The second brother did not keep his promise and warned his wife also. Only the youngest brother kept his word. The following day, the mother, the mother of the brothers called, called the wife of the oldest son over and asked her to take over bread and wine for them. Alas, mother, she said, I cannot for today I am unwell. So mother called the second wife of her second son. Alas, mother, she said, I'm not well today. The mother called over the wife of the third son, who went by the name Rosafa. Rosafa, please take over bread and wine for your husband and his brothers. But mother, I do not wish to leave my baby son. He needs me. We shall take care of him, said the oldest wife. So Rosalfa picked up the bread and wine and made her way to the site. As she approached, the brothers looked up sadly. They explained, and they explained what now must happen. Rosalfa did not protest and accepted her fate, asking only that she built into the castle whilst her still alive. Her plea continued. As she asked for her right eye to be left showing, so she must see her son, and for her right breast to be exposed, so that she can feed her son, and for her right foot to be let free, so she might be able to wreck her crate for her son's cradle. Good. Jenna, tell me your real first name, because it's very beautiful. Yeah. I love that. And that's a Moroccan name, or where does that originate from? It means angel. <sighs> Very appropriate, because you have been my angel this year. You've been my super helper coming in and helping. So, girls, I want you to tell me about Morocco, your life, what excites you, your henna tattoos. Go ahead. Well, we are from Morocco, which is located in northern Africa, and which favorite part of the culture? Food and and the traditions. We have many traditions such as henna and holidays. Now, do you both have henna tattoos today? Yes. Let me see. Mine's still getting done. Girl, you need to hook me up. I need a henna tattoo. Tell me about it. It's a paste which lasts for like two weeks. Mm -hmm. And it's like an art form. And I can tell. And tell me about those beautiful earrings you have on, Miss Jenna, because you don't typically wear those to school. It's blue gems that my grandma bought me for my holiday. And what holiday would that be? Ramadan. Tell me about Ramadan. Ramadan is a religious holiday that we that we fast in for a month for a month you what wait you fast for a month yeah from sun from sunrise to sunset and then can you eat after that yes oh that's commitments so what's your favorite food during that holiday smoothies mm -hmm. what kind of smoothies avocado I have never heard of an avocado smoothie. Oh, that's so good. I want the recipe.
Okay, so a lot of work went into those videos and I wanna thank everyone that sent them in and participated. Amazing, amazing. So let's do a little introduction. Safi and Koa, go ahead. Thank you, Jesus. What? Number like four? Oh. Koa, who are these people you're with? Safi. Who's behind you? What do you call me? Mommy. What does Daddy call me? Anderson. And what do I call Daddy? Matt. Awesome. Thank you. And Ava? My name is Ava. This is Miss Everett. AKA your mom. And you call her Miss Everett because she is a teacher at Bayhaven. Mm -hmm. And we love her, right, te uh, teacher? Right, Ava? Yes. <laughs> Thank you. And her first name's Tidra. <laughs> Thank you. Elliot, you want to introduce Mr. Erickson and then your parents? Unmute. Um, my name is Elliot. This is my mom, Jing. And this is my dad, Jing. <laughs> that and keeps it simple. And who's our principal? Mr. Erickson. Can you wave, Mr. Erickson? <laughs> We're happy you're here. Thank you. Okay, the Wardell family. Who would like to do a quick introduction? Okay. Hi. Hi. Hello. Hi. 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 Could you introduce your family? Say hi, Wendy. Say hi, Wendy. And hi, I'm Sarah. Sarah. I'm Brandon. And who's this? Dinah. And this is our cousin Ansley. Hi. Awesome, Ansley. She's thank a you. Circus performer. <gasps> really Exciting. Is. Thank you so much. And Miss Aya and Jenna. This is Jenna. And this is Anne. Thank you, the lovely sisters. And last but never least, Jude. Hello, my name is Jude, and this is my brother, Arbor. All right, thank you. Perfect. All right, I have another little video to share with you. So let's hope I can do it. I can. All the things I've learned during COVID, including Zooming. Here we go. Dad's name is Jing, and my mom's name is Jing. Oh. And the telling difference between their names is the last names. My dad's last name is Ma, and my mom's last name is Zhang, as they say in China. Now, ping pong started technically in 1886 when there's an earlier version of it. In 1902, there was ping pong, regular table tennis nowadays. And the inventor was Englishman or British man, um, David Foster. And David Foster invented ping pong, of course. And in 1921, 1922, table tennis was adapted as the name. But ping pong and table tennis are still used nowadays. Ping pong is a usual term. Mm. So why did we get the table tennis? Coronavirus, of course. You're kind of stuck at home. Mm -hmm. we, of course, now we have the vaccine, we're a bit more free. And after we get it, I don't have it, of course. I'm a kid. And Should we have it, maybe, at some point? Yeah. Or, so when did we get the table? Uh, I don't mm -hmm. know, over three months ago. Mm -hmm. And why did we oh, get it? Yeah. Because, because of coronavirus. Yeah, and, and also, coronavirus, oh, like also because your mm -hmm. parents really enjoy uh, playing ping pong. Yeah. When we were little, we and, grew up playing and it. And it really started when we were little. You know, when we were, we grew up in China, and uh, when we were uh, Elias' age, ping pong was really all the rage in China. Uh, pretty much everybody, you know, had easy access mm -hmm. to a ping pong table, and that's how we uh, started our passion really for this sport. Even though. Uh, back then, we didn't really have our 
you know, private table, we had to sometimes compete with other groups, you know, for the use of that table. Some people even use the table for drying their quilts or, you know, clothing. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Good job, Elliot. So Elliot happens to be a really talented um, artist. He does these amazing sketches. He likes graphite, which is pencil, and he'll make these ships. And so I think he's either going to be like an architect or president of the United States. I don't know, but you got my vote, Elliot. All right, so my little friends, I know some of you are not little, some are bigger than others. Does anyone want to share real quickly something that's similar about the families you've seen or something that's different or both who'd like to share koa did you see anything about anybody else's family that reminds you of your family anything they said or did Anything different? I don't know. Okay, that's fair. Aya? I saw in the Goldies family that they like to play outside a lot, and so do we. Awesome. Jude? Um, my family in Kosovo also celebrates Ramadan. Excellent. Anybody else? Something that's similar to your family that maybe you did not know about these friends before. Elliot? Well, same thing. We the Goldie like the Goldie family, I like to play outside. I'm assuming my family. <laughs> okay, so you have some things in common. Terrific. Well, I want to thank you all for being here today. Does anything, anybody else have anything they'd like to share? Mr. Erickson? I just wanted to uh, thank Mrs. Stein for bringing our group together over this past school year. I mean, it's obvious we have amazing families that are part of our Bayhaven culture. And um, just a big thank you to Ms. Stein for reminding us that diversity is our biggest strength at Bayhaven. And just looking at you and talking with you today and learning from you, um, it's just wonderful to see the relationships, not only within your families, but with our school. So just a big thank you to you, Mrs. Stein. Thank you. I appreciate that. Thank you very much. Um, being with all of you reminds me we have hope for the future and there are brighter days ahead. All right. A quick happy birthday to Koa. A quick happy belated birthday to Miss Ava and Wardell family. Anything you'd like to share and please take us out. Yeah. Sure. Um, I was just going to say before, because we've been on mute, uh, Elliot, you're just so like well spoken. I know the president, you said the president, you're so well spoken, man, and have such a like, uh, I don't know, you should do debate or something. You're very <laughs> well spoken. That's all. Thank you so much for taking part in all of this with us. It's been a lot of fun. So we're gonna Thank sing, you. you are my sunshine. If you guys wanna sing along, please feel free. All right. Ready? You are my sunshine, my only sunshine. You make me happy as skies are gray. You'll never know how much I love
Amazing. Amazing. All right. Thank you, everybody. And uh, little Dinah, I, I can't wait to see you in kindergarten soon. And I guess that's a wrap. Everybody did such a good break.